In this video, I'm going to introduce some concepts, definitions, values, and equations that are going to lay the foundation for our solving acid-base problems in general chemistry too. The first thing I want to draw your attention to are the three definitions of acids and bases. The first is the Arrhenius definition. An Arrhenius acid increases the concentration of H plus or protons in solution. And in general chemistry too, you want to think about H plus as pretty much the same thing as H3O plus. They really do the same thing in solution, but H plus is more of an idea. We don't actually see H plus by itself in a solution. It's really in this form, H3O plus. An Arrhenius base, on the other hand, increases the concentration of OH minus in solution, or hydroxide. Bronsted-Lowry acids actually donate protons to something else, or H+, while Bronsted-Lowry bases accept protons from something else, H+. Lewis acids accept electron pairs, and finally Lewis bases donate electron pairs. So when you look at a chemical or a molecule in a reaction, you should be able to pick out what sort of activity it is doing and be able to label it as an Arrhenius, Bronsted, or Lewis acid or base. So for example, something may be an Arrhenius acid, a Bronsted-Lowry acid, and a Lewis acid all at the same time. Or you may have an acid that is only an Arrhenius acid while not being a Bronsted-Lowry acid or a Lewis acid. So right here, I have a reaction with a general acid reacting with water. So my general acid, I've abbreviated as HA, my water is right here, and it forms A minus and H3O plus. So my acid HA is an acid because it has a hydrogen or a proton attached to it. So you can think about this reaction in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry definition. HA is going to donate its proton because it is a Bronsted-Lowry acid, while H2O is going to accept a proton because it is a Bronsted-Lowry base. So you can see HA has donated its proton be to become A-, while H2O has accepted a proton to become H3O+. And notice here, when an acid donates its proton, it becomes a conjugate base. When a base accepts a proton, it becomes a conjugate acid. Down here I have the general base reacting with water. So this is the general reaction for a base reacting with water. Here, notice water is now acting as an acid because A- is my base. Again, think about this reaction in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry definition. That's the easiest way to think about it. So in the Bronsted-Lowry definition, we say a base is going to accept a proton. So A- turned into HA. It accepted an H, a proton, and it became a conjugate acid. Bases become conjugate acids. H2O started out as an acid, and we know acids donate protons, so it lost an H and became OH-. The acid turned into its conjugate base. Notice you can also see how the Arrhenius definition explains some of what happened here. This acid resulted in an increased concentration of H3O plus in the solution. While this base here resulted in an increased concentration of OH- minus in the solution here on the product side. So see how these acids and bases can fit the requirement for multiple definitions simultaneously. So you can see if I were to write the equilibrium expression for this acid right here, we actually abbreviate that K sub A for acid. And of course, when we write an equilibrium expression, we put the concentration of the products in the numerator and then the concentration of the reactants in the denominator. And we're going to exclude water because it is a pure liquid. And you can see here that H3O plus is really what is going to control the pH. So we care about that the most here. All of these other things have a very minor effect on the pH uh, relative to H3O plus. So the higher the Ka, the bigger this numerator, and the more H3O plus we have. So H3O plus contributes to the lowering of the pH or the strength of an acid. So we say the bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid, the more H3O plus it is going to donate in solution. If we were going to write the equilibrium expression for this base down here, we would call it K sub B. B is for base. We've got the product concentrations in the numerator and the reactant concentrations in the denominator. And of course, we again excluded pure liquids and water. So OH minus is really what's going to drive the pH in this solution here. It's really going to determine what the pH is. Everything else is going to have a very minor effect. 
So really, this is the only chemical we care about when we're doing acid-base problems in a reaction like this. So we can say that the bigger the Kb, the more OH we have because the bigger the numerator and the stronger the base is. So thus, increased Ka, the bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid. The bigger the Kb, the stronger the base. And we actually have some associated definitions here, pKa and pKb. P means negative log of. So pKa is the negative log of Ka. So you can think about when Ka gets bigger, pKa is actually gonna get smaller. So it's tricky, but a small pKa actually corresponds to a stronger acid. And pKb, the same thing. pKb is negative log of Kb. So the smaller the Kb, the stronger the base. So just remember, bigger Ka, stronger acid. Smaller pKa, stronger acid. Bigger Kb, stronger base. Smaller pKb, stronger base. One more thing I'd like to mention is that the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. Conversely, the weaker your acid, the stronger the conjugate base. And it works the other way around. The stronger the base, the weaker your conjugate acid. The weaker the base, the stronger your conjugate acid. Okay, now I'd like to talk about some of the trends you'll see in acid strength. So acids actually increase in strength as you go down a group. So you can see, for example, here I've got group 7A from the periodic table. And you can see that as you make an acid from an element further down in this group, it gets stronger. So the Ka of hydroiodic acid is greater than the Ka for hydrobromic acid. That's greater than the Ka for hydrochloric acid. And finally, that is greater than the Ka for hydrofluoric acid. So acid strength increases going down a group and going this way in this list I have here. Next, acids increase in strength from left to right in a row on the periodic table. So you can see again, I've listed out some Ka comparisons here. So oxygen is to the right of nitrogen. So H2O is stronger than H3N as an acid. Sulfur is to the right of phosphorus on the periodic table. So it is stronger as an acid than H3P. H2SE is a stronger acid than H3As because selenium is to the right of arsenic on the periodic table. Okay, next let's look at oxy acids. So oxy acids are in the form hydrogen, oxygen, and some other element. And a good rule of thumb for oxy acids is that if you subtract the number of hydrogens from the number of oxygens in the acid, and you get a number greater than or equal to two, then you have a strong acid. So for example, HSO4, if I subtract one hydrogen from four oxygens, I get three. That's greater than or equal to two, so HSO4 is a strong acid. However, if I get a number less than two, it's a weak acid. So for example, H3PO4, if I subtract three hydrogens from four oxygens, I get one. So H3PO4 is a weak acid. Finally, I have some good equations and values to memorize down here. pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration, while pOH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. Add pH and pOH together, and you'll always get 14. Kw, which is sort of like the equilibrium constant for water, is equal to Ka times Kb, and this is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's a great value to memorize. This means that Ka is 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and Kb is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. Multiply those together, you get 1 times 10 to the negative 14. pKw is equal to pKa plus pKb, and that's equal to 14. So remember, P simply means negative log of. So this equation is basically like we took the negative log of everything in this equation. The Ka of H3O plus is one, and finally the Kb of OH minus is also one.